So hello, it's my pleasure to welcome to my my channel uh, Patrick from Vetted. Uh, for many of you, I'm sure a familiar face, somebody who's uh, doing great work. I think since one year or so with a daily daily show, daily news. Um, mine not just weekly, but anyway, um, somebody who's who is on the on the same page like me, I think. Uh, about the whole topic and how to approach it. So welcome to Europe, welcome to Austria, welcome to Vienna. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much uh, for having me. This is exciting. I've never been to Vienna. Um, I want to go. So this is the this is the closest thing I, I have right through you here. Well, when you start your live shows, you often call out people from all around the world and as you yeah. see, as you can see, many people around the world are watching what you're doing. So yeah. we have uh, three options to, to, to start this talk. First, uh, I could butter you up. Uh, second, uh, <laughs> I could slightly embarrass you. And third, uh, we just start the conversation. So what would you prefer? Oh, man. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm a... I'm a fan of getting roasted. So hit me with number two. Go ahead. Slightly. Okay, embarrassed me. sure. So what do you know about Austria and Vienna? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, you got me. Um, okay, I do know a little bit. Um, maybe not. Um, I, I remember the only connection I have to Austria is um, quite close to me, actually. Um, I did the Camino de Santiago, okay, in mm -hmm. Europe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. El Camino, the pilgrimage, right? Mm -hmm. oh, a lot of Europeans great. take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and on the on the Camino, I met this fantastic woman um, named Antonia, and mm -hmm. she is from Austria. And we spoke for a long time, you know, weeks. You know, we would hang out yeah, and sure. talk and, and all kinds of things. And um, I learned about how she grew up in Austria, Um and I learned, you know, some words here and there that I can't remember anymore. Um, but we had a great time communicating and she was just the sweetest person um, on the planet. She had a great sense of humor. And I remember that specifically. So shout out to her and just shout out to Austria, man. I got sure. nothing but love. OK, yeah. So uh, I thought you might uh, say Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know that, too. Yeah, that is true. I and Christoph Waltz. Oh, is he from Austria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. He's partly German, but also from Austria. Anyway, See, so, I think yeah. that's what Americans get confused on. Germany, Austria. Yeah. And we don't like right, the connection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't blame you. Like, like blame you. Canadians being thrown in America with, with America. Sure. No, anyway, totally. my, my channel is not Austrian only. It's a German speaking area. And that's uh, also my focus. I try to make more of UFO news public in the German speaking uh, area, which is even less than in United States, especially in the big media. So I think people like you are doing a great work because you bring the, the, the most interesting and well, more actual news to, to people around the world. Okay, so uh, let's start with your background. Um, it's not so long that you're doing a UFO channel, but you hinted that you did other channels before that, and before that you were a chef. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about yeah. yourself. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, before um, Bet it started about a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, and before that I had a channel called Lone Star Plate Podcast, mm -hmm. and it was um, Texas-based, right where I live, uh, interviewing you know, celebrities from Texas. You had to be from Texas or a connection to Texas. So authors, scientists, actors, directors, uh, professors, you know, uh, politicians, um, sports, uh, you know, er er anything and everybody. And it was really great, um, but it wasn't picking up the kind of traction we wanted. So we we switched over to Vetted, but I, I don't run it alone. Um, there's a uh, have a business partner. His name is Sebastian Sauerborn. He's actually from Germany, um, but he lives in um, in the UK mm -hmm. um, and he has for a long time. So he actually will probably appreciate that I'm doing this interview um, uh, for Shout sure. Out to him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sebastian. Um, so he produces he, your show from England. He's yeah. He well doesn't produce the, the show, but yeah. Yeah. partner with it yeah, yeah he yeah, owns yeah. A, a podcast networking mm. group called soho podcast ah, it's I on see. our uh, on our main website 
um, you can see a link to it. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so I'm part of a network of other mm -hmm. podcasts. They're all European based. I'm the only yeah, one yeah. in in America. Oh. Um, so um, yeah, I have strong connections still to Europe. And um, yeah, we we just connected. Uh, after I left being a chef, I was in the restaurant industry for well over a decade. Worked, I worked in Europe. I lived in Spain for a few years. Mm. Um, a resident. I'm still a resident. Yeah, absolutely. My wife's from Spain. Um, I worked in Mexico briefly in Veracruz, but mainly the States. Um, and yeah, in 2014, I started my own food truck in Austin, Texas. It's mm -hmm. very famous for, mm -hmm. for starting a food truck. And I grew that into... A uh, nice big business, you know, few different locations. What um, kind of food? Catering. Uh, we we originally started with strictly Spanish food, mm -hmm. like, you know, straight Spanish. Uh, but that wasn't working too well. So I sort of combined Spanish food with Mexican food, which is where, you know, my mom's uh, from Mexico City, so I'm half Mexican. So kind of that upbringing and a little bit of Texas flavor, kind of those three, a little fusion uh, so we, you know, ended up switching uh, to that, which is great. I loved it. But, you know, five years, a little over five years of grinding that business, I just realized I just didn't see my life going down this road. It was just uh, it's a very hard life um, mm. running a food business or being in the food mm. business. Mm. Um, so I transitioned into podcasting. That's how I met Sebastian and we collaborated. And it seems like a such a huge turn. step. I mean, yeah, it is. It's a huge huge turn um i had a little bit of previous experience in my um when i was about 19 or so 20 i went to a broadcasting school here in texas mm. for a year so i learned to be mm -hmm. a broadcaster specifically a radio broadcaster so i kind of just took that training that was a long time ago and kind of just brought it to podcasting mm -hmm. if you will mm -hmm. so how did you decide to the uap topic was it just because it was in the water or do you have any background oh no 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 background um or background i've always interest. been interested yeah yeah i've always had a topical interest in it you know mm -hmm. just kind of oh love movies and the documentary okay that's cool i'll watch that always interested always wondering are we alone this is fascinating mm -hmm. um i'm i'm you know i'm a sucker for the mysterious, the things mm. we don't know about life, right? I like, uh, you know, looking into that and studying that. So uh, on my old podcast, Lone Star Plate, I did a few episodes kind of covering the topic, nothing crazy. I took a trip to Area 51. I, but what really sealed the deal. Oh, was you had this I, on your one, one year. Uh, yeah, I showed trip. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. And, but what really changed everything was when i interviewed james fox mm -hmm. who uh had just come out with the film called moment of contact and it mm -hmm. was about the 1996 uh virginia brazil case right and yeah. i was and, I, and then i interviewed him and i was just like this is awesome so when so when the, is he from texas the, no no he's Doesn't, not but, but yeah, i just yeah. i didn't care at that point i was <laughs> okay. just like I love this and I want to, you mm -hmm. know, do this interview because it got offered to me. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't care if he's from Texas. We'll find a connection to Texas somehow. I was like, have you heard of Texas? He's like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> done. Good enough. Okay. Uh, so but when we were going to shut down Lone Star Plate and we were trying to think of what what is, a, you know, the next project, right? Well, what's something else we can do that I think people will like, but also something that I'm interested in. So it was it not to only something... uh, Google search hot topics for YouTube channels. Oh, definitely not. No, no, no. It, it, as soon as we brought it up, I was like UFOs. I, I wanna, yeah. I wanna, I wanna study this. I wanna get into it and look into it. So we kind of talked about. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. And I call it vetted for a reason because I don't just want to cover the UFO topic. That's why I didn't call it something more specific mm -hmm. to UFOs because mm -hmm. eventually I want to expand vetted into covering a lot of the mysterious consciousness mm. the universe mm. you know any other sorts of paranormal uh as well but i as far as i could uh witness it it, it took off quite easily i mean you rose to popularity or at least uh, a lot of viewers in a short time do you think it's because yeah. because you do it daily i think you were one of one of the first to who, who did that I not think some, that has not so a lot many. to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Just from a technical aspect, right? Not mm -hmm. even 
it's you know what I'm doing, but just yeah. for the fact that you could count on me every day to have mm. a video at the same time too. It was very important mm. to me that I did a video the same time every day. Um, I still haven't missed a day. I've I've had to take down a video after I've done it, but I yeah. have never missed a day putting out a video. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think that consistency. And again, I think that's just from my restaurant background, like having that consistency. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the actual content, you know, I'm still on my journey like yourself, right? We're still learning, figuring this out, how to present the information. One thing is looking into the information and dissecting it. Another thing is, okay, now how do I present this to the audience, right? That's a whole nother yeah. thing, right? That's yeah. a whole nother thing. So yeah. And I also built it not on interviews. Right. Which I think you're, you do the same thing, yeah, which is right. smart. I think you don't, you just need you to do the, the work. Right. And, and that way you can always rely on yourself and make sure that you deliver on the goods for the audience. Now, of course I've implemented uh, interviews like you're doing yourself because I think it can add another element. Right. And right. as we grow, uh, but I don't need them. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. like you, you don't need, you don't need this interview, you don't need interviews. You could just, you do you. And I think that's the strongest thing for an audience to, invest in you right like they're going to invest time in you well why should i follow this guy why should i subscribe to him he could be gone tomorrow right because people come up all the time in this topic and want to do podcasts and video but then don't stick around mm. so people are hard to like well should i invest in this person and i really wanted yeah. to always make that clear you can invest in me i'm not going anywhere right go and ahead this makes, this makes it very very personal and approachable yeah. and that's uh, one of the the reasons i like your channel it's not you know that. ai videos and uh, <laughs> computer yeah. generated voices telling me some rubbish about approaching uh, um, spaceships <laughs> yeah right, right now going on i did a big debunk on my last uh, episode because actually yeah this is <laughs> I agree. Just I love it. Think about it two seconds and then even if you sure. have no background in astrophysics or whatever. I mean, anyway. Uh, so I what I like about your approach, let me tell you and then uh, I'd like you to respond to that. Um, I like your approach because uh, you come across as very curious, open minded, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, not skeptical on the on the surface but uh afterwards or in your contemplation you can you you always state that you you're not sure about it or you have no fixed opinion but uh even if you have some some crazy guest who claims whatever uh you you you, you go into it you, you you participate in the way he's seeing things or she uh, but then take a step back and say, well, could be, but not really. This is a, about correct. That's my impression when I'm I'm watching your channel. No, it's uh, it's very interesting to hear how people take what I'm doing, right? So it's uh, that's actually great feedback for me. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. I I want to be open minded. I want to listen, but th it's a two step process, right? I. I can listen and be open minded, but I don't need to take the next step and say, I believe you either. Right. I don't need to say either. I, I don't know. There's never enough evidence presented to me to lean one way or the other. So if I have to make a choice by default, I'll just be, well, I don't believe it yet. Uh, but I'm always willing and uh, interested to hear people's stories because it's not just about me. It's definitely about my audience too. They, a range of beliefs, a spectrum of beliefs. And I feel my job is just to, you know, let people come on, tell their stories. Um, and the vetting process more happens after the fact when people see it and then they can look into the photos or the videos of the story the person tells and kind of do a bunch of research. You've got hundreds of people that will immediately jump on something and start researching and looking into it. And that's sort of the vetting process. But it's not a gotcha show. I'm not here to, you know, gotcha or, or, or call someone a liar or yeah, yeah. disparage anybody. You know, I, I'm not into I, that. But I, yeah, I just, open thought, just thought about your Jason Sands three part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Changing the position with with each video. <laughs> but yeah, yeah with that's get, a great getting example. new information, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and another thing, um, before we switch to general uh, uh, topics, another thing I like is you have a, um, a kind of unique approach. What I mean is that uh, you look for details others don't. 
I don't know if it's uh, in your nature or because you have a, a special view. Sometimes uh, you take weird angles to my uh, opinion. Why did you focus on that, uh, that particular sentence or whatever? But others, on the other hand, you always uh, also often find angles that are overlooked. One of the reasons I, uh, I contacted you was because when uh, Elizondo did uh, his book came out, um, when I read it or rather I listened to it, I listened th through the whole thing till the end and credits and everything. And immediately Dan Farrar jumped out to me because he the first time he mentioned who is doing his uh, his documentary, this much talked about documentary, and you did too. And I think nobody else at first at least jumped onto this. And I thought, well, of course, you, you, you already had an interview done with him. But anyway, uh, I thought, hey, there's another guy looking for, 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 for minor details and, and figuring out uh, things behind that. So that's, a, that's another thing I like about your sometimes weird, but uh, interesting uh, angle and approach. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, for sure. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm always trying to... I don't know. I just approach it from my angle, right? My filter. I have no other. I don't try to be anybody else. Um, I just use my experience and how I view things. It's for me, it's quite simple. I, when I hear a story and I hear something, I immediately am building an image in my head. So what happens is I'm just trying to fill the get the spaces, the, the white space on the painting, right? They're telling me a story. I'm painting it in but there's stuff left off. So my questions just come from the gaps. Mm -hmm, I'm just mm -hmm, asking what mm -hmm. are those gaps? And then, so it's the, that's why the questions come so rapid fire to me. And if I focus on particular little details, cause I feel the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. I feel like the weird little things that don't get covered, but cause everyone's going to cover the majority of the stuff. So I'll just yeah. take a different angle. And it really is just genuinely my personality. There's no like forced perspective or forced, angle i'm trying to take i'm just it's just me and how i look at it mm. so let's jump into the very specific topic of today's ufo uh, ufo news so my question is what is going on <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i would ask you what is going on i don't so, know what, well I you, have, know. you have guests and you 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 scan the news like i do daily like, Twitter space or whatever. So, so yeah. what's your general feeling about the situation we, we are in? I, I, I used uh, in, in, in the summer, I started to call it disclosure fall because of disclosure autumn, because I thought there, the documentaries are coming out and so, and yeah, somehow things are moving and progressing, sometimes stalling, so on. But what, what's your general feeling about the situation we're in right now? Dic disclosure mostly. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a tough question because there's a lot of distinctions to make, right? Which is, well, when we say disclosure, what do we mean exactly, right? There's kind of different levels to it. Um, and then when we say progress, well, what kind of progress? It depends what area, because in some areas you could say we're making great progress. In other areas, you might say we're not. And for example, one might be, at least from an American standpoint, the approach in government right now i would say is we're making progress because we're having mm -hmm. conversations we mm -hmm. never had in our government yeah. legislation they're trying to pass that they've never tried before hearings that hadn't happened in 50 years uh you know a government funded program to look into this whether or not you agree with the program arrow it's still being funded by yes, taxpayer right. money right we're looking into these things so on that level you'd say well that's progress but then you might say well but we're no closer to the truth mm -hmm. right which is the, the big D disclosure, small D disclosure. Do we just have the basic facts? Are we alone? Yes or no. You know, is that answered? Uh, we're no closer to that. Right. So you might say, well, we're, there's no progress there. We're, we're no closer to learning uh, the truth about a lot of this stuff. In fact, sometimes you could argue the more information is just uh, the, the haystack gets bigger, but the needle is still the same size. You know what I mean? So the needle in the haystack just becomes like, oh, quit adding hay to this. I'm never going to mm -hmm. find this needle. Um, but I don't know. Right. Data is important to study. Um, so I guess it just depends what part of this conversation you're looking at of 
whether or not it's progress or not. And again, depending yeah. on your own experience, you may view it differently. If you've had a personal experience, you don't need disclosure. You know it's real, right? So the progress yeah. is 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 going to feel different to you. So, so uh, um, I would say uh, legislation. That's that's a, a big progress. Uh, when I talk to people who have no idea about what's going on, I always state the last five years they have been every year a new ufo law in the united states there have been some also in in in, in brazil and in, in in mexico but mostly in the us every year there's a new law and just think 10 years ago if somebody they was it they passed a ufo law in congress eh? you never would have thought yeah. that this is possible so sure. this this is one one kind of progress and the other one slowly uh, approaching the, the uh, broader audience for me uh Luis Elizondo on the Daily Show is progress. Luis sure. Elizondo on CNN is progress. I don't know how how much it really will uh, wake up or interest people in in the long run, but but still, that's something that's also going on. Progress about what what is this phenomenon? What are we looking at? Well, that's a different question, because it's yeah, I agree. So broad, even even the the guys who did the long time study in in new york they've just found out yes if you look you see something and you see a lot of different stuff but what is it sometimes it's weird metallic spheres changing uh, forms next time it's just lights next time it's beings appearing in front of you or in your head it's just yeah i think that yeah. the next step must be to to look closer and to to get more information Sure. So, so um, when you think about your guests, uh, who do you think is uh, closest to a kind of truth? You know, like the, 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 they talk about the temp, uh, tempor te temporal model and extraterrestrial and so on. Who was convincing to you in, in his approach? Because, for example, Daniel Sheehan is strictly on the extraterrestrial um, idea. When you think about your, your, your guests, who would you say uh, impressed you or made you think or made you go in one direction? That's a really great question, actually. I don't know if I've ever thought about that. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I have never been asked that before. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question, man. Um, I would say this. It's hard for me to pick favorites on anything. Like no, not favorites. Just, just what, what no, I, I know what you mean. But yeah. like picking one specific thing because, and maybe it's just my nature. I every person has some quality about the interview that I appreciate or brought something new to me to think about, whether or not they meant it that way or not. Right, but what I take away from it. So I don't know if there would be anyone in particular that I would name that like, oh, they're the most convincing or this because they all bring some sort of little different angle. And because I'm still on the outside of I don't know, I'm I'm want to talk to anybody and everybody, you know, but just on a fun entertainment aspect of talking to people like I really enjoy talking to Danny Sheehan. He's a lot of fun to talk to. You know, you brought him. I just he's just a fun guy to talk to, period, about this. I've enjoyed having uh, collaborations with some of the other content creators mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we've been. I enjoy talking to them um, about it a lot. But, you know, yeah, just kind of anybody uh, that comes on. Again, it's hard for me to judge who's bringing the truth or not. Um, it's, I guess, theories they bring up that I might enjoy. But, yeah, I think everyone brings like a little. A little something that I add, you know, to myself of of this is interesting. Okay, so let me change that question from from the people to the to the content, uh, which things uh, of the possibilities seem most plausible to you personally? Yeah, about the whole phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that question. Um, I I mean, just you know, what seems the most plausible based on the life humanity has had up to this point would be a space to space or star to star, right? Like extraterrestrial, actually so another planet, a species coming in. That's it because that's something we've done here, right? As the planet grew, 
we went from different on boats and that that seems likely out in space the same thing right these these planets are just other islands on earth's type of right so that seems the most plausible um that 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 would be the same thing um but just from a personal standpoint i really like the time traveling i mean that just sounds exciting uh this idea that that future humans uh would be the ones coming back or or past humans or however that's looked at with time because i know we don't understand that completely um but yeah i i find that that theory to be quite interesting i mean even ultra terrestrials the idea that these species are have been living underground or on this planet the whole time with us like is also insane to to think about um even interdimensional right existing right next to us but we mm. don't see it unless you have something to to break you into that reality um i mean they all kind of have something that i'm like oh that's that's that would be interesting but as far as just most plausible definitely to me star to star mm. this was would be also the most com um, comforting because they're just visitors like us and you yeah, could exactly. talk to them because if if they are uh, you know interdimensional in 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 a, in a way that they are always around us like some people say you can't hear a dog whistle you can't see wi-fi uh, but if you have the, the the really the right equipment you can hear and see it yeah. so if we have the right equipment uh, and we can scan all around us and oops in the next corner there's this guy standing there all the time watching us yes. all the time <laughs> and sometimes they appear and take you to their place whatever but um, that might be the not so uh, comforting like some friendly or ho hopefully friendly visitors to to yeah. our planet yeah that's a good point um yeah um uh i i didn't uh, announce that we have this interview but i uh, asked uh, my members and 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 uh subscribers what they would like to ask somebody like you a, a host in the us about the whole topic and some interesting questions came up like uh do you think that a kind of disclosure would hurt the economy would like you know the petrodollar and and the, the, the whole uh, setup of, of of the power structure wall street and so on we have a sense in um i mean you know this is all speculation because sure. i am not qualified um you know find you know don't understand the the system in a way that i think could offer um a, a good answer but you know at the very least it's something that should be thought out and considered for sure right with the with the right people because i think just dismissing oh nothing will happen that seems dangerous um it definitely seems like well no let's stop and think about this this could have an effect on the economy and i think it's the responsibility of people in power to have those kind of difficult conversations um so yeah i, I think it's a complete possibility that some sort of financial ripple effect could occur and then and then the question becomes to what effect right how how devastating would it be what kind of interruption would it cause in the financial market but elite again the very minimum definitely worth having the conversation yeah. about i i was just uh, checking some of the questions it was not, not impolite looking at my phone while while oh, talking please, to no worries no no worries. yeah yeah so uh another question how would... dare you how <laughs> dare you my gosh those europeans rude, yeah. rude yeah. europeans yeah sure <laughs> no uh, uh another question would be like um the the, the the psychic connection that always comes up um you think this is uh well you think this is the, the main item or a side item like they are visitors from outer space and somehow they also have telepathic or whatever uh abilities and they influence us on, on a psychic level or something or the whole phenomena is psychic and it manifests uh, only to our eyes and sometimes to our senses as uh, solid objects if a take on that um well, that's that's interesting um i guess i honestly never thought of it that way to be honest um yeah that's it that's an interesting comment you know concept about it um i find the whole idea of a psychic connection 
you know, telepathic connection, right? Um, interesting and pl plausible in a lot of ways, just because we don't understand our full, the full aspect of our consciousness and how it works and how we connect with the things around us. Um, and there are plenty of examples in nature on earth here where something you might call a psychic connection is happening, uh, whether it be the fungal, you know, the fungus like environment or plants and things like it's very strange. We just don't understand a lot of this. So, you know, it may seem laughable at first, but it, it seems like, well, there could be something there. And then again, the question then becomes, well, if these beings come, could they have this capability? And mm -hmm. then from there you ask, what evidence have I seen of this capability, right, in real life that could lead me to this? Um, I mean, it's fascinating. I think it's plausible. A lot of people claim to have this psychic connection on Earth with no relation to ET, just on their own. They have this special ability, um, and there's been a lot of test programs the american government has invested yeah. money in it into it not a lot but we have invested money some even argue that there's programs going on right now that we don't know about yeah. that they're still funding so yeah I, I, it's an interesting part of the phenomena that i think is you know worth looking into and worth um divulging because there has been some interesting results uh, from it, it it has been a, a slow approach for me i was also always interested in in, in psychic stuff but i never mm. connected it to uh, not not directly at least to the ufo uh, area but uh, it it's, seems unavoidable like unavoidable like uh, yeah, skinwalker range right. for example they they yeah. dig out metallic stuff but they have all kind of weird uh, psychic energy energy stuff going on at the same time yeah. so it's, it's yeah. it converges i think you, you you never had uh some of the the more religious oriented people on your channel like jeffrey kreipel or diana pasalka you didn't yet no no i've covered diana pasalka a lot yeah, 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 yeah. um and i would love to get her on because yeah, sure. yeah i would like to explore that that aspect for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm with you so an, uh, another question is, um, there seems to be not a conspiracy, but a group of people, you know, like uh, Gary Nolan, Elizondo, Grush, and uh, Carl Nell, and some others who seem to work together, more or less behind the scene, to, to promote the whole issue. And they always two ways to see that uh, many people think they they saw a lot behind the curtains and they got fed up with the, the, the whole mystery and all the, the, the compartmentalization. I never, <laughs> this, is <laughs> the great, hard, this is the hardest word in English I know. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> anyway, um, and, and they want to end the secrecy. That's the one approach because some of them are from, you know, Pentagon and so on. Uh, melon uh, and uh, and the other one uh, the other approach for many people is they are not to be trusted especially because they are ex cia and ex pentagon and ex whatever so so how do you see this well let's say group of disclosure people yeah it's um they're kind of like the celebrities, right, of the mm. UFO world in a lot of way, bringing a lot of information that everyone dissects and looks into, right? They're they're kind of the top of the pyramid, if you will, of how a lot of this stuff gets disseminated out. Um, yeah, I mean, I follow their stuff. I'm, I'm, I look at it impartially, right? I'm, I'm not trying to be their friends. I know a lot of people in the UFO community try to become their friends mm -hmm. and, and let's be friends. And I'm not looking for I got friends. I got friends. I don't need more friends. I can barely handle the friends I have. Um, so I'm I'm impartial to it. I take in the information and try to present it the best way I can, the you know, most fair and objective, which is why you never hear me on my podcast disparaging anybody or putting anybody down or any, you know, I'm not about that life. So I don't really feel one way or the other about them. I'm happy that there's people out there trying to get information out, right? Mm -hmm. Um and you know, it's it's a tough balance because in America, you know, we're taught a lot of different things. You know, we're taught that America is the greatest and 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 worship America and 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 you know, patriot 
patriotism and 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 America and 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 I love my country. I do, and I've lived in other countries, and actually living in other countries made me appreciate my country that that I was born in and from and raised in a lot more. Uh, because I just realized every country's got problems. There's no there's no perfect country that not at all. So anyone criticizing America is like, well, we could turn the mirror on your country, too. And I guarantee you we're going to find a bazillion problems. There's assholes everywhere, as I like to say. So, you know, but at the same time, you know, we're taught trust your government, your government. But then there's so much evidence that our government facets of it, because it's not just one thing, hasn't been very honest with us in the past. So, yeah, there's a part of me that's a little suspicious of people who are former government coming out and saying X, Y, Z um, about this issue. Yeah, there's no there's no question. I, it, I, I think you would be dis, disingenuous mm -hmm. of your own thoughts to to not admit that you are a little suspicious of that. Doesn't mean anything nefarious. And I'm not saying they're lying. I'm just saying. Yeah, my eyebrow raises a little like, mm, OK, but I'm willing to listen. Right. Um Everything's got to come out in a book. Everything's got to be approved by the Department of Defense to be talked about. So I don't know. Again, I think there's many, many journeys happening in the UFO community with people trying to get the truth out. Mm. So it's not like there's one journey and we just need to focus on that and, and you know, whatever. So, yeah, let them let them do mm. their thing. These people are doing their thing. Other countries are doing their thing like you are and, you know, other people and. I'm all about it. Just anybody and everybody. Yeah. Now, my approach is um, I'm sure they're not telling us everything uh, that the people who have been in the Pentagon, but they even say so that they can't tell us everything. Absolutely. That's but, the first thing they tell you is. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Right. Uh, and and uh, of course, uh, and some things look really suspicious, like, you know, uh, Chase Stratton first working on disclosure with all uh, UAP task force and so on and then switching to an aerospace <laughs> company and yeah. maybe now working on some uh, ufo stuff he doesn't want to give up uh, through eminent domain and working against that so some some things look a little bit suspicious and of course uh, people like nell can't tell us everything he knows and he has been everywhere so my 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 approach is uh Nell, if he's not a gatekeeper, then he, he could have been because he's been Avoiding everywhere. Air, Air Force yeah. bases and private sure. aerospace industry. And he, his biography reads like a biography I would expect from a gatekeeper of the legacy program. But on the other yeah. hand, That's a good point. But on the other hand, without Elizondo, we wouldn't be talking. He came out sure. 2017 in this article. And without this article, there would be nothing in the, in the disclosure process. And now with uh, with imminent, it uh, got jump started again. Maybe for 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 a, a gaslighting program or, or psyop, this seems a, a whole lot too complicated. Um, make public aware of the whole thing just to gaslight them. This this doesn't add up to me. So I guess yeah. on the on the most part, those people seem to be genuine and trying to to do this disclosure process, whatever this is. But sure, yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah. So um, I uh, about really uh, things just happening. Uh, you heard that the, the 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 Schumer amendment might not be dead. That's that's an interesting take, and 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 the the, the upcoming hearings. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> you heard what uh, Nancy May said uh, that uh, she wants to people she wants people to who know shit <laughs> and to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I covered that today on the live yeah, stream. I, yeah, okay, absolutely. I, I yeah. haven't seen that yet. So, but what 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 what's, what's do we have any hopes or expectations about the upcoming? hearings and about the upcoming um yeah hearings especially yeah yeah for sure i definitely i have hopes and expectations um you know my hope is that you know it goes well and that they're able to have more my hope is that they're able to bring first-hand whistleblowers in right people who have actually touched touched crafts um and when she says who have seen shit i i mean what you know 
shit being UFO or alien bodies, not just, well, I saw a document of a thing of a guy, you know, you know, uh, uh, that to me is, I hope that's, that's what they talk about Raj, that. that he maybe when he said he's the first and witness that he saw photos. <laughs> Correct. Um, and you could argue, OK, you are a firsthand witness to seeing those photos because the story is seeing the photos, not there's E.T., yeah. right? That's a It's a big distinction. So, yeah, I want people who have actually touched the crafts, worked on these crafts, works on these bodies, not new people who did it, but the, the actual people. Yeah, that's my expectations. I hope that these hearings are able to bring some of these people out. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen on this next one, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, I hope they continue to have more. Um, I'm glad they're doing it, um, you know, and I hope they um, stick with it and are able to actually make some movement. If anything, again, it's just part of the journey. So no matter what happens, I think it helps just spread the conversation. People start discussing it. It gets covered. Anything that's government related, at least for American news, they're more likely to cover it. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like. They're not, they don't necessarily have to cover UFOs, but they can be like, oh, there was a hearing mm. in the house that talked about X, Y, Z, and it just so happens to be UFOs, right? So that's a way to get into the news in a lot of ways and get it covered and get people discussing it and talking about it, who will then dive deeper into other interviews and other things. And and so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for as far as the UAP amendment, um, I think some of that news about well it's maybe not over yet i think that's just hope to keep people kind of going mm -hmm. but it's it's not it's not going to be included in the ndaa like it it's it, there's just no way um it's election season i just don't once it's out like this it's kind of done like i i know people are going to try to fight for it but i think that's just hopeful and you know at the end of the day screw it fight till the bitter end right to the last second so i'm i'm cool with that too um happy to support anybody yeah. trying to fight for it right well there, at least there are three new laws in the provision already uh i hope yeah, they, they exactly they they go through exactly. because they are they are they are already powerful like like the last yeah. one uh, it didn't pass last time uh, and was toned down from 64 pages to 20 or something but still now the uh, the archive national archives received one yep. terabyte of uh, of information yep. so this yep. this still has some teeth so I'm also optimistic on this time. But about the hearing again, uh, that the one in the Senate will probably be just a new chief of arrow. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, but uh, in the House side, yeah, um, I think Admiral, ex Admiral Gallaudet has been confirmed. Mm -hmm. At least he also said so. And there are some rumors that maybe uh, Luz Elizondo is going to testify. Have you heard that? And have you heard any other names dropped already? Um, I've heard a lot of names, but I haven't. I've heard Luis Elizondo say that he is willing to testify, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't heard that he'll be testifying at this hearing specifically. Um, could it happen? Yeah, absolutely. But based off the news that I heard that you mentioned, um, Nancy Mace the quote we were talking about earlier, right? She wants a military vet. She wants people who've seen mm. shit, right? Mm. Well, you know, they're focusing on USOs, right? Mm. Underwater submerged mm. objects. And that's why Rear mm. Admiral Tim Gallaudet is coming. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how Luis Elizondo would really fit into that. But I do think he should testify if he wants to. Like, absolutely. I mean, his story would be great to get under oath and to tell. And um, absolutely. I'm curious... You know, they had three last time, right? And all three were together. Um, oh, great, great ringtone, by the way. Let's go, guys. It's from Sailor Moon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. It's no, hey, listen, Sailor it's raw. Moon. It's, uh, what, what, what is that? Sailor Moon? I don't know what that is. It's an um, anim anime. Anime. Oh, anime. Got it. Oh, the, song, the music. Jap the, 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 the Japanese Girl Scout superheroes. <laughs> Okay. Oh, right on. All right. Hey, listen, whatever you're into. Um, no, I love that. I, I just like uh, the music. I just like the music. Yeah. No, it's great music. No, I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. A anyway, um, I, I honestly don't even know what I was talking about. I already forgot. No, please. No, that was funny. No, no, no. I, about I like uh, about uh, who is going to be to testify. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, right. We we yeah, yeah. and you said they had USA three last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they had three last time. Yeah. So one is one is um uh saying he's going to testify, like you mentioned, mm. Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet. And I believe from the ASCA poll, they're still working on who else is going to testify. But if you pay attention to the details of what she said specifically, it's that they she doesn't say who, but they're trying to get her to have certain people testify and she wants other people to testify right she wants people in uniform and that's why that whole conversation mm -hmm. came out it's like mm -hmm. no i want people that were in uniform they've seen shit that's who i want to testify mm -hmm. but clearly someone or something or some group is trying to get her to have other people test who is that who are those people? I don't know any of that, but that's interesting. Maybe, maybe some people from the from the Fox documentary, from the new one, because there are also new faces coming coming out. Sure. Like like uh, Sarah Gam for uh, recently. Yeah. Which was really interesting listening to her. I, I did a, is she, a. Wait, is she is she going to be in the program? Yeah. She's going to be in that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think she mentioned it, but anyway, yeah, she's. I think in the end of the interview uh, with uh, Matt, the Matt Ford, Ford one, right? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she mentioned that. Okay. This was one of oh, the things cool. that ah, listen up. Yeah, and very cool. Yeah, yeah, and and um, let's not forget the question I had. But but my 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 impression of her, I I really loved the way because she's 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 just just somebody, you know. She's sure. she's just a, a government worker on a desk on a computer. Okay, she has a degree and she knows a lot about astrophysics and weapons of mass destruction and whatever. But still, she's just somebody sitting at a desk besides other people and going to lunch in the Pentagon and later changing to a other a other place. And besides that, she's a medium. Okay, why not? She loves cats, and 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 and. <laughs> This, this, I think this is the future of, of whistleblow, whistleblowing. It's, it does, doesn't have to be a, a general all the time or, or a mad scientist crawling out of Area 51 or something. Because <laughs> there have to be lots and lots of people, you know, the one who holds the, the, the tray while the doctor opens up the alien or something like this. Sure. So, yeah. that, so I mean, this might be the future of whistleblowing, just people who all who've your been average all, person who have also been there uh, or so, yeah. seen some stuff and so on but but Great yeah point. but um the uh, in the in the hollywood uh reporter no what's in the then did they just announced uh, the fox screening for buyers and they had a whole lot of names in there uh yeah did you recognize any of them some 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 military names who were, were featured I think yeah i'm trying to think who they put in that hollywood reporter i think for the most part i, I recognized a lot of the names but ah, okay. i mean the real names he's leaving out yeah um yeah. right of the people that he's going to show um in this thing and at the end of the day you know things could have been changed in this final cut so even if we think xyz is going to be in it at the end of the day, you never know, right? Um, even that happens in Hollywood movies. Actors mm -hmm. shoot a movie. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, yeah. And then they show up to the premiere and watch the movie and go, wait, what, what, what yeah, happened? Right. <laughs> I, 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 I was supposed to be the lead in this movie, and yeah, now I'm yeah. in one scene. Uh, shout out to Adrian Brody from The Thin Red Line. Um, that's what happened Ended there. Ended up on the um, cutting, cutting room floor. Yeah, cutting room floor. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Terrence Malik was, was famous for that. But, yeah, yeah you know, so... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm I'm curious um, who who is going to be in it, who they're going to show um, in this documentary. Yeah, staying on sense. this topic, uh, do you have any idea uh, what this means uh, that they are now having a screening for bias? What this means in timeline? I, That's I, a good I'm, point. I'm not not into this uh, Hollywood uh, well. Sure. In turn, no, I get it. It definitely can push back a release date because if the buyer buys it and is like, well, this is how I want to distribute it, does that mm -hmm. make sense? Then yeah. it changes the whole thing. Now, James could have a plan and, and sell it as a package, right? This is what I have the idea for distribution. This is what, you know, mm -hmm. if you buy it, this X, Y, Z. But it just depends what the deal is, right, of whoever is, is going to make this final, you know, buy, because I guess. I think and that and it could be a group or a group of yeah. people. They even finished the trailer, I think, two two weeks ago or something like this. 
Well, at yeah. least that's what 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 he wrote. So, yeah. so you you think, well, if it's somebody like Netflix taking it, they just could remit it, uh, release it immediately if they wanted to. But but you think it will take some time, you know, adver advertising or whatever. I, I've no, yeah, no idea. It, absolutely, yeah. it's it's hard to tell. It's it's. Mm. I, I know it'll be different from how he distributed his last films based okay. on what happened with the film company yeah. that he used before, right? So yeah. it's all different. Um, okay, I'm gonna say something I haven't said right here on your show. Okay, I've seen the the trailer for the documentary. All right. And it's awesome. It's awesome. I can't wait for it to come out. So I know there's things that are already done, um, uh, you know, about this film. And I know people that have seen the film. Okay. Uh, and they love it and think it's great. So um, it, it could totally change how this, how this comes out. But I know he's trying to push it for right now before legislation, right? So I know he wants it this fall, potentially even before the hearing, potentially even um, before the election, right? That's happening. It's very close. Which is soon. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's that like now, but depending on the distribution process, it could be turned around because everything's ready. Mm. Everything's done. Mm. It's not like there's things to mm. be done. It's mm. done. It's locked. Picture locked, trailer locked, poster yeah. locked. Things are locked, right? I would imagine. All, I'm sure it can be changed up to a certain point, mm. but um, you're talking about a lot of money. So once things yeah, get sure. set, it's like changes are expensive. Um, yeah. It, and is it going to be this huge, wide theatrical release? That's what would delay it mm. because you've got to set that up and plan it sure. and get the theaters right. Yeah, uh, find the scheduled. slots. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, find yeah, the yeah. slots. So, but with streaming, yeah, it, it could go up the next day. He could yeah. he could say, you know what? I screened it for buyers. Nobody's buying. I'm going to release it my own. Here's the website. You pay yeah. twenty bucks. You can see it. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's too it's too hard to tell. Mm -hmm. But I got my fingers crossed. Can't wait. Uh, I hope it's soon. Yeah. Um, there was something I wanted to uh, something about coming out. Yeah, right. Um, because you said like leg legislation. The the um, there also was talk last year uh, since since last November actually that there would be another Soul Foundation conference this time hosted in yeah. Washington also to push le legislation but I haven't heard anything about that since month or so did you hear anything because also su such a thing takes time to, to 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 be set up and to to get the people together to and plan. so on yeah, yeah absolutely yeah exactly just logistically right you got to book yeah, right. people hotels flights schedule yeah exactly um yeah as far as i know it is scheduled for the end of november oh really um and it ah, is okay. and it is happening oh uh, okay. could that change absolutely sure. right sure, sure. it could change but yeah it, it's set for uh end of november so this would still be before they vote on the nda i guess yes. so yeah 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 Yep. Because the last time it was December, I think, when it got finalized and also... I can't part. remember. I think it was... Yeah, I don't remember when No, it was no, last no, time. for sure, because the, the Soul Foundation uh, uh, conference was in November. And uh, that's when Nell had his talk where he explained how this disclosure process would work with the legislation. Yeah. He actually yeah. wrote. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and then in December, it, 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 it was uh, negotiated and then stopped. So yeah. nice. So this is probably okay. Yeah, let's see how how the the election will change that direction. I mean, um, if if there's the election and it's clear who's the winner, and so be it, whoever, fine. But if we have you know fights going on and 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 and, and uh, I didn't lose and I have to appeal every vote. Then I I think this would also shed some uh, put shadow on the disclosure process because absolutely yeah so yeah, so I agree I agree I agree yeah when, that, when, that's why the election and and not just any election because any yeah. American election would have an influence but this particular yeah. one is is yeah. so spicy right so yeah I'm with you absolutely it could it could uh, throw a wrench in it for mm -hmm. sure.
Let's, let's hope it's not starting a mini civil war or something like that. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I live here, so yeah, I hope that doesn't. Yeah, happen. Yeah, and... but I'm in, but I'm in Texas, so I'll be good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but what what if Tom Gru- uh, not Tom Cruise uh, the uh, your Cruise. your senator your senator doesn't make it. Oh, uh, you, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, I think he's in danger also. Yeah. You know, because I, I started listening to all the UFO stuff in, going on in the US, uh, USA, I, I also had the habit to uh, watching very closely the American politics starting from 2015 or 2016, because if you realize it or not, probably you would, but not everybody, but uh, American politics always, you know, influenced the whole world. So, so it was... Yeah. It was um, a big deal when Trump was voted in, and this oh, yeah. had impact Absolutely. around the world. So uh, I'm always closely watching. But 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 um, on the other hand, I'm I'm glad that this particular issue seems really not to be partisan, which is a wonder on itself. I agree, a hundred percent with that. Yes, Thank God. Yeah. Well, we're wrapping up here, but. Uh, I just want to say, uh, I, my my impression why it is uh, uh, bipartisan is because they're really pissed. I mean, the the whole of uh, of Congress, both sides uh, and also both houses, realize that they have been probably lied to by their own institutions, be it military or whatever, and they're really really angry and they're really saying, "Come on, we stop this rubbish." In the 70s once when CIA was doing all this weird shit and now now uh, you, you're pulling the same thing again and I, I think really they are, they are they are angry and that's that's the reason why they're working together well my impression from afar no that's a good a good opinion that's yeah. a good opinion I understand yeah. what you're saying for sure yeah. so um, any closing comments anything you have to announce you're continuing your channel of course but anything uh, coming up that's interesting or something special planned? I mean, not really. Just going to keep grinding, doing what I do. Everything, you know, changes on a dime, right? It changes on a month. So, you know, just know that I'm going to be, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be covering this uh, as as things unfold right mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. so yeah just grinding doing my thing go to vetted.show you can um yeah. follow there yeah what would you people like to to follow you on on the show mostly uh youtube or other platforms too and other other social media or what would like people to subscribe to uh, our, our youtube channel for sure our youtube channel um you know vetted pretty easy if you put that in the youtube vet it, it it will come up um yeah follow on the youtube and then from there right it, it kind of goes out but that's definitely a youtube uh based um you know show vet it is even though we're uh getting out on other platforms now okay so thank you for for your time thanks to uh, for oh, yeah. having this conversation across the pond as we used to say <laughs> yeah <laughs> no man thank you so much for having me this was awesome really i mean that this is a great conversation you thank asked some you. really good questions and i like hearing different perspectives um and how people view things and it's definitely great getting a european perspective of how things are being taken uh, and your and your questions reflect that so mm -hmm. no thank you for a wonderful time man i really enjoyed it yeah thanks again so who knows see you again sometimes absolutely Okay. Peace, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Bye. Thank you.